censorship. Uh, Soviet, Iranian of the past? Nah, not at all, actually. Uh, coming to a country, a town very, very near you very soon. Now, Nick Cohen is a, a British journalist and author, terrific columnist, by the way, for The Observer, a blogger for The Spectator, and TV critic for Standpoint magazine. His new book, which is essential reading, and you can now get, of course, in Canada, You Can't Read This Book, is the title. I love it. He joins us now from London. Welcome to you, sir. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Now, I mean, it, it, it's extraordinary what, what you say. You collect various uh, incidents and examples together, which I think will shock a lot of people who may have heard that the, the odd issue of censorship that's taken place. But I think it's got worse in the past 20, 25 years. There, there are now more people who, who are silenced in the West because of their views and opinions. Uh, well, I mean, if you go back 30 years, you have, have the great change... Um, off the fatwa against Salman Rushdie. And that, for the first time in Western countries, introduced violence. It might have been a, a para-state violence from Iran, but until then, people, writers, journalists, ordinary people in the West, didn't think that if they put forward unpopular points of view or views as a, um, uh, uh, a rather theocratic and unpleasant minority might, uh, m might take offence at, they didn't think they'd be killed. And that changes everything. That's, that has brought a great wave of... Uh, of tongue-biting, of self-censorship, of uh, quite a lot of hypocrisy as well, Michael, mm -hmm. into Western discourse. Now, even uh, beyond, I suppose, the, the, the sharpness of you will be killed, you'll be physically attacked if you say this. I mean, you probably yeah. are aware of this. In Canada, I think they've diminished, but we did have the, the, the huge influence of human rights commissions, where if you merely had an opinion... Yeah, yeah, I know about those. Yeah. Yes. I mean, do, do you have something like that in the UK as well? It, uh, no, although uh, UK law is very, very messy. Th 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 there are lots of things. That if, you, if, you, if you offend certain in interest groups or cross certain lines, you end up in trouble with the law. It's not, it wasn't as clean, cu clear cut as it was in Canada. And they're, they're all dealing with a fundamental uh, um, problem. It's fine for the law to say, I, this isn't a book in favour of absolute free speech. It's mm. fine for the law to say, for instance, it's wrong to incite murder. Yeah because it's a crime to incite murder. Uh, if you start talking about incitement to hatred, well, it might, might be a, a, a sin to hate someone, just it might be a sin to envy them or to lust after them, mm. but it isn't a crime. Yeah. And the law gets itself into the most terrible messes when it starts making criminal offences of incitements to acts that aren't crime. Mm -hmm. And uh, all kinds of hypocrisies start boomeranging uh, back at the uh, politically correct state, which we, 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 we have in Britain to some extent. Mm. I mean, for instance, these laws, these taboos, are there because people, quite rightly in my view, think that sexism, racism, and homophobia are wrong. Mm. But because they are, uh, because these are, are then, uh, 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 people then get into mentality that we must protect minorities from hurtful speech, come what, come what may, they then start protecting uh, groups and organizations they actually are sexist and are racist and are homophobic. So you can see how, the, 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 if you like, the political correctness of the 1968 generation has, has boomeranged back through the air and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and smacked it and become a, uh, and become a contradiction in itself. Mm. Yes, that's a very good point. And it's not only the, the, the laws themselves and the ideology behind the law, it's their implementation too. Because what we've seen in North America, and I think you've seen it in the UK as well, is it's particular groups who have a certain uh, fashionable appeal who seem to have the most influence. Now, in Canada, it's been overwhelmingly oh, yeah. both uh, Islamic and gay, but many in the gay community will say, oh, for goodness sake, you know, this is ridiculous. If, if I don't like what, what the guy says, I'll ignore him. But within the Islamic community, it's quite difficult to find many people who will say, it's wrong, you should be allowed to destroy a Quran, you should be allowed to make fun of Muhammad. They might say this, but it's followed by a, a very large but, which leads to, you can't do it. Yeah, well, uh, there might be more Canadian Muslims uh, than you think uh, who say that in, 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 private, in private, Michael. But, I mean, look, let, let's just look at the laws constitutions. I don't know, for instance, who has been up before these tribunals in Canada. There might be people who are incredibly uh, uh, prejudiced and incredibly racist. But then, uh, certainly the case in Britain has been uh, that the, the people bringing these complaints are also incredibly prejudiced and prejudiced racist. Yeah. So, I mean, if you take gays and fundamentalist Muslims, well, uh, you know, that people like the Muslim Brotherhood quite happily preach that one should kill homosexuals, along with Jews and, 
and any Muslim who of his or her own free will decides to ch uh, change his or her religion. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you then, this idea that there is some rainbow coalition of, um, of disadvantaged groups who all fit together neatly is, is false in itself. But beyond that, beyond that if, if, if your human rights tribunals in Canada are taking on an absolute bigot who doesn't oppose Islamist ideology, but just uh, hates Muslims because they're Muslims, because they've got a different skin colour, because they've got a different religion to him, you should be able to beat him in open argument. Yeah. And if you can't, well, perhaps you've got no business being in public debate in the first place. Perhaps you ought to get out of the way and make, make way for someone who can. Mm -hmm. I think extremely well put. And of course, I, I think you, you know the answer that, uh, that the major players have been taken to those commissions have been very sophisticated and enlightened people who object to Islamism and not to individual Muslims. Yeah. What about those who seem to join this coalition, who must realize out of self-interest, and I, I've met some Jewish people, some gay people, who will march arm in arm with the Muslim Brotherhood and other Islamic groups, surely out of pure self-interest, they know they're being completely suicidal. Well, I'm talking about Islamism here, Michael, not Islam as a religion of a billion or so people. Sure. But Islamism as an ideology that developed in the 1940s about the, the strangest and most staggering and hypocritical um, alliance of our time is the alliance of people who consider themselves left-wing or liberal left, who are allying with people from, you know, in classic left-wing terms, are from the religious far right. In certain cases, one would say the clerical fascist far right. Uh, the confusion of values going on here is, it, is a wonder to behold. Uh, um, but it's also a kind of betrayal. What happens if you're a young Muslim, Muslim woman in Toronto whose family might have come to Toronto to get a, away from theocrats, to get away from, say, the government in Iran, and you want to enjoy all the freedoms Canadian society offers you, you want to be a feminist, you want to experiment, you want to break taboos, and uh, old men uh, 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 who claim to represent you, who claim to lead your community, start um, threatening you, um, uh, perhaps more than verbally threatening you. You ought to be able to turn to white people in Canada who call themselves liberals and socialists and feminists yeah. and ask for their support and ask for their backing. But because they've got lost in this strange alliance whereby it's somehow politically correct to go along with uh, religious reaction, they can't, they can't look yep. after their own allies. They can't speak for them. Yeah. Um, and if, if you look at that on a global scale, um, the consequences are, are, are pretty horrendous. Oh, and in, in this country, Oppressed of course, we, we've had uh, honor killings. Now, Nick, I'm sorry to interrupt you, so we're, we're running out of time, but we're going to have to have you back. The, the book is called You Can't Read This Book. You can read it, and you, you can buy it at Amazon and elsewhere, so go and buy copies right now because it's a, uh, a statement you'll be making as well. It's a, it's a terrific read. Nick, thank you for your time, and we'd love to have you back on the show. Well, thank you very, very much, Michael.